Hey guys, today we're gonna kind of take a look at uh, variable timing control and cam phasers. Um, so we're gonna do a few videos uh, just to get you guys familiar with what's going on with it. So first off, anytime you're dealing with cam phasers, um, you're gonna have to get into where the timing chain's at. So in this case, this is a K-series Honda engine. Uh, we're gonna pull the valve cover off of it. So we'll pull the valve cover off and then kind of take a look and, and get a little bit deeper into it. So first off, take all your valve cover bolts loose and we also have to take the ignition coils out of this so we'll pull the ignition coils out so there's our ignition coils dipsticks got to come out of it the rest of the valve cover bolts are all loose all of our o-rings and our grommets don't uh, drop those down in the engine and then we can lift our valve cover off Okay, so now we're into our valve cover, we're into our valve train, we can see our cam gears. So here's our cam phaser. This is only a single cam phaser uh, on the intake camshaft. So it only advances and retards the timing on the intake cam. The next thing you want to want to do is to set this thing up at top dead center. So we're going to take a look at our timing marks. So on the crankshaft, there is some marks, we're going to find those. And on our cam gears, there's some gear, uh, marks on it also. So there's a mark here, and there's another one right here. So we're gonna turn this engine over so that we're at top dead center. The white mark on a Honda engine is always TDC. So we're lined up, there's a gun sight on the front of the crankshaft, on the timing cover. On the pulley, white mark, right here. And then if we look at our cam gears, they are lined up also. So we are at TDC, number one piston at top dead center. Next thing, we're gonna take the crank bolt loose. In order to take the crank bolt loose on a Honda, we have a special tool. So this special tool fits in Looks like a great big huge nut that fits in like so. This is the holder. And then we're going to break this loose. Like that. Okay, so now that we got our valve cover off, we're set at top dead center. We got our crank bolt broke free. We're going to spin the nut off. Nice steady pressure on both sides and it slides off. Keyway just fell out. Important note, make sure you keep an eye on the keyway of where it goes. Okay, so one of the things that you've got to do before you can tear the timing chain off of this thing, you've got to relieve the tension on it. So Honda put this little cover on here. This cover is a hydraulic tensioner and it's got a little, looks like a little chain link on it. That's the lock. That's what locks the mechanism to keep it from blowing apart. Let's just slide my crank pulley back on. If I rotate this the opposite direction, you're going to see that back up and it lines up with the hole in the body of the tensioner. That's relieving the tension of the tensioner. We're going to take a pin, just a, a push pin, and set it inside of there. And we're going to turn this back to TDC, to the white mark. Okay, and we can take this off, catch the keyway. Now I'm going to remove the tensioner itself. Okay, so this is our tensioner off of the engine, and you can see it's locked in place. So oil pressure is supplied to this, and it shoves that out, with it, and it's also spring-loaded. So if I were to release this, you can see the arm will drop down, and this thing will come completely apart like so. So to compress this, 
we have to give it a little bit of tension till you see the locking arm move shove up on it <laughs> now it's locked into place and it's reset all the way back to the, the front side of it Okay, so the next part of this venture is going to be in the car, the motor mount's got to come off of it. So the motor mount would come off this big tall bolt, and then we're going to take these bolts out of here and get those out of the timing cover. They go through the timing cover, into the block, into the head, so that's removed, that's out of our way. That's the OCV valve. The OCV stands for oil control valve, and we're going to pull that out so you can take a look at that. Okay, we got our bolt out of the OCV. Gonna give it a little twist and a little pull. OCV comes out, there's O-ring that seals it. And you can see there's three stages of this, okay? So you've got your oil pressure in, advance, and retard. And then this is just a dump that dumps the oil back into the timing cover, lets it go back down into the oil pan. So this is a, the OCV oil control, that's what gives this advance and retard on the time. Okay guys, so the next part of this is pulling the timing cover off of it. So we've got bolts all down through the side with the motor mount. We got the bolts out of it. There's also three that go up through the oil pan into the lower part of the timing cover. I wanna make special note of this, whenever, if, if you're ever doing one of these, that these two bottom bolts, these are a shouldered bolt, and this is the indicator. This is what locates it. If you try to put these bolts in anywhere else, they don't fit. Okay, the two lower ones are the shouldered bolts that go in. This is what centers the timing cover onto the engine. Okay, so one thing that we need to kind of look at here is our timing marks are lined up. We set everything at top dead center. So on this particular engine, on the back side of my camshafts are two holes. Now, there is a special tool that we, we use for that, and this is it. These are the cam locking pins, okay? So we can slide those cam locking pins in the back side of the head here. Like so. So there's a little hole down here at the bottom that goes in and then into the mount. Now, if you don't have the locking pins, these little screwdrivers will work just fine. These will fit also, okay? All right, so now that we've gotten our crank pulley out, we've got our cams locked in place, um, our bolts are out of our timing cover, we're gonna pull the front timing cover completely off the engine. So one thing to note with this is most of your aluminum stuff, there's a little pry point on it. So if you look, there's a little pry point here and here. So this is one of them. You can pry against the block here and you can pry against the block on this side also. So if we come in here, you can give it a little twist and it will separate. Now these are usually glued on. There's an RTV that holds them in place and we pull it off and there we have the cover. Make note, there is a O-ring in here. If you pull this off, you should put a new O-ring on and also put a new cam or crank seal in this. All right, so our cover's off of it, and some things we need to kind of look at here. All of our tension is released off of it because the tensioner is off of the engine. So this is one of our guides. This is also another guide. And we've got our reluctor wheel. So pay close attention to this whenever you take it off. The numbers or letters should be facing you, and I think it even says outside right there. If you turn this around and put it back on there, that engine's gonna be 180 degrees out of time and it will not start. That has to be in the outside position. So we've got our reluctor wheel off. We can then take our timing chain off the engine. So our tension's off of it. We're gonna take the bolts loose. Okay, so we got our our guide off, so this guide came off the, the back side or the front side of the engine, intake side. 
So you always want to pull these off and look for wear on the inside edge of this plastic. Okay, it is plastic and it does wear. It's got metal rubbing against it. Lay that off to the side. We also have a guide on the top side of the engine. So we pull these two bolts loose. We can take that guide off. Lay it off to the side. Same deal. Look and see if there's any wear on it. This one is pretty good. There's no marks on it. Now we're into the timing chain. We can lift the chain off and we're off the engine. So there's my timing chain off the engine. All right, so we got our timing chain off of this thing. I've got the bolt out for the cam phaser to, to show the cam phaser. One of the things that I wanted to talk a little bit about is on the bottom side of this engine, um, we drive our oil pump with a chain. So this chain is going down to an oil pump that's down inside the, the pan. There's also two balance shafts in that oil pump assembly. So this has to be timed. The next thing we're looking at is our cam phaser. So this is the cam phaser, and the purpose of the cam phaser is to adjust timing when the engine is running, okay? So we hear variable timing control, VTC, I think Toyota likes to call it VBT. Um, so this gear turns independently of the camshaft, okay? And you'll see a little keyway, and there's two grooves on this, and those grooves is what lets oil pressure into my cam phaser. That also has a locking pin. This is the locking pin on the back side of my cam phaser. So the idea of this is whenever you start the car cold in the morning, it doesn't have any control of where that timing was at whenever the car was, was being driven on startup. So it could have been in the full advance position whenever the car was being driven. When you shut it off and start it up first thing in the morning, it has to roll around to TDC. So this locking pin, whenever the engine is cranked, will spin around and hit the locking mark on the cam phaser. Mr. Samus, is that lock in base time? Yes, base time, zero degree, no advance, no retard, it's zero base time. Okay, so now that we've successfully pulled the timing cover off, and we've gotten into this, we pulled the timing chain off, the cam phaser. So if you were replacing a cam phaser, this is the process you would go through, okay? So cam phaser is now back on the camshaft. I'm gonna put the bolt in, and then I'm just gonna go through the reassembly of this, and you can see how, basically the reverse order of the way we took it apart. Are there any torque to yield bolts on this engine? No, there is not any torque to yield bolts. Um, everything is, it can be used over and over and over again. We can now put our chain on, and it's the same type of thing with our chain. We've got two marks, two chain links, two chain links, and one chain link for assembly. So if we look at our dots on our camshafts, Our dot lines up in between the two different colored, the blue colored chains. And get our chain laced around here. We've got a dot on this tooth here. That's where the chain should line up like so that has all the slack on the back side of my chain. So we can kind of let that dangle there for a second. I'm gonna put my chain guide on the front side of the engine. And then this is where you would clean up your timing cover, apply your RTV, and then set everything back into place. We do have to slide the timing the guide for the tensioner back in. Remember the two bolts for centering. Okay, so we've got our timing cover back on, our bolts are back in place, torqued, and the next thing I'm going to do is put the tensioner back in place. So I'm going to use my finger and slide the tensioner guide over, set my tensioner in place, get my bolts lined up, top one, there's the bottom one, 
I'm going to look in and make sure that my tensioner, the end of it, is lined up in the guide assembly. And then I'm going to snug these down and I'm going to pull my release. And you can see it jumped. This chain now has tension on it.